Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. It took the new Prime Minister Donald Tusk over two hours to deliver his parliamentary address. This was his third appearance as the head of the Polish government. Tusk presented his new government, which includes veterans such as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Radosław Sikorski, and Bartłomiej Sienkiewicz, the great grandson of the Nobel Prize winner in literature, as Minister of Culture, among other familiar paces from the middle of the previous decade. This report was from the same was prepared by Łukasz Zmuda. Donald Tusk started his speech with purely political tax on his opponents from law and justice. The list of what you have done over the years is impressive. We will make everything public. In a few hours we will see what the budget looks like and where the money is hidden. In a few dozen hours we will know precisely where the money is, why the funds disappeared. Donald Tusk announced an increase in remuneration for the public sector. He also presented the composition of his cabinet. Władysław Kozinyak Kamish will become Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Defence. Krzysztof Gawkowski, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Digitization. Radosław Sikorski, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Tomasz Semionak, Minister Coordinator of the Special Services. This coalition maintains common foundations. Therefore, together with the Chairman, Kosniak Kamish, Mr. Wojciech Czarzasty, Mr. Speaker Hawovnia, we will guard it to work smoothly. So those who hope we will not last long united will be disappointed. Everything indicates that Donald Tusk's new government will consist of 26 people. No cabinet after 1989 was larger at the time of its appointment. Poland will spend approximately 470,000 zloty monthly on the salaries of the most important people in the state, not taking into account deputy ministers. Politicians sent about 250 questions to the head of the future government. The visa scandal was one of the most shameless. Your promises regarding single-member electoral districts and all those reforms you've promised by then and now we have a constitutional majority to live this. Will you do it? I ask you not to divide local governments and to smooth out all these injustices. Do you still think that the NATO-Russia pact is valid or do you intend to seek the Allied military presence that happened during the peace government? According to parliamentarians, Donald Tusk's speech was not inspiring. For the most part, it concerned political issues rather than election promises. If you want me to describe the content, it was below expectations, full of hypocrisy, cynicism, inciting hatred. During his address, Donald Tusk quoted the farewell letter of a mentally challenged man who set himself on fire in Warsaw in 2017. Shameless playing on emotions and using the mentally ill person is a low blow. Many ministers in Donald Tusk's government held the highest state functions in his previous cabinet. The coalition government then pursued a reset policy in relations with Russia. On the one hand, Tusk speaks about love and bringing the good. On the other hand, he has repeatedly incited hatred. It is not worth believing in it. Donald Tusk declared that there will be staff changes at Polish television or its liquidation in a very short time. Bartłomiej Szynkiewicz will be responsible for this. This person, after the Smolensk crash in 2010, wrote a piece in which he praised the bloodshed in this crash as a cornerstone for the Polish-Russian alliance. The new government is scheduled to be sworn in by President Andrzej Duda on Wednesday at 9 a.m. And now to a strange and unexpected event in the Polish Parliament. A far-right Lord Maker, Grzegorz Brown of Confederacja, used a fire extinguisher to put out Hanukkah candles lit to honour Jewish holidays and to stress Poland's inclusive tradition. Brown was excluded from the Parliament chamber and escorted out of the building. But the question remains, why did such an incident happen at all? Since Brown is known for his Russian connections, it seems not unlikely that his actions were motivated by the Kremlin. Television footage showed the incident and people in the vicinity covered in powder from the extinguisher. Same speaker, Shimon Hawovnia, excluded him from the sitting and said he would inform prosecutors about his actions. Poland's chief rabbi, Michael Shudrych, told Reuters by telephone that Braun's actions were not representative of the country and that he was embarrassed by them. Someone extinguished the Hanukkah candles and a few minutes later we relit them, he said. For thousands of years our enemies have been trying to extinguish us from the time of the Maccabees right through to Hamas. But our enemies should learn, they cannot extinguish us. Karl Grzegorz Rysch of Poland's Catholic Church said in a statement posted on social media platform X that he was ashamed of Braun's actions. The Smolensk disaster of 2010 still arouses emotions in Poland. The Russians blame the pilots and keep hold of the wreckage and other evidence in the case, while the Polish Air Accident Investigation Commission has determined that there was an attack and explosions on board the plane. The only person convicted in the case is Tomasz Arebski and the official Monica B for the poor organisation of the flight. However, this verdict may also be questioned because in February last year, defence lawyers filed a cassation appeal to the Supreme Court, citing poor staffing of the court.
The Supreme Court found the judgment invalid because the appellate court was not composed of valid judges. Article 439, paragraph 1.2, i.e. an indication of improper staffing of the court in this situation, considering this allegation to be justified, the judgment should be quashed and the case remitted for reconsideration. The accusation appeared when the verdict turned out to be unfavourable for the defence. I do not agree with this type of procedure. The private prosecutors are relatives of several victims of the Smolensk disaster and the political elite of Poland, including Anna Valentinovich, Władysław Stasiak and Zbigniew Wasserman. They accuse Arabski and Monica B of agreeing to allow the plane to land at a closed airport near Smolensk, which was a violation of the HEAD instructions. It is Tusk who should bear the consequences. For organization of this flight, he walked off free and in my opinion he should be charged by the state tribunal. Today's decision is an announcement of the legal tsunami awaiting the Polish justice system. The new coalition wants to question the status and decisions of 3,000 judges appointed over the past eight years. During this time, they issued approximately six million decisions. There is no such procedure for invalidating the judgments of the Constitutional Tribunal. The opposition will carry out a thorough reform of the judiciary. The judgments of the Constitutional Tribunal are final and no one can challenge them. I hear that Donald Tusk is talking about such an action which will lead to the overturning of the legal order. On the 10th of April 2010, 96 people died near Smolensk, including Polish President Lech Kaczynski and his wife Maria, the highest commanders of the Polish army. The Polish delegation was heading to the ceremony marking the 70th anniversary of the Katyn massacre. On the 11th of April last year, the final report of the Smolensk subcommittee was presented. It clearly shows that the court of the disaster was at least two explosions. Polish and American experts were involved in the research. The previous cabinet of Prime Minister Donald Tusk did not recover the main evidence in the case of the plane wreck. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Radosław Sikorski, said that the wreck was not important evidence. In turn, Prime Minister Tusk promised that he would personally take care of returning the wreck to the country. Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky met top United States lawmakers seeking additional funding for the continuing war with Russia. Many Republican lawmakers have questioned continued aid to Ukraine. While he will not address the United States House of Representatives, Zelensky met House Speaker Mike Johnson privately in the Capitol on Tuesday, Johnson spokesman Raj Shah said in an email to Reuters. It was a very powerful meeting. President Zelensky made it so clear how he needs help, but if he gets the help, he can win this war. And he outlined in some great detail a, the kind of help he needs, and how it will help him win. Even many of our Republican colleagues talked about we, we are winning this war, and if we get the help that, if he gets the help he needs, he will win. On the other hand, he made it clear, and we all made it clear, that if we lose, Putin wins. And this will be very, very dangerous for the United States. So we cannot let Putin influence through any surrogate <coughs> What, is, what we need to do for Ukraine. He also made one other point. He needs the aid quickly. If we don't give the aid quickly, several things will happen. First, the military needs, but second, Europe and many other allies will say, what is going on here? They're not giving, they're not giving them the aid. The meeting comes as the White House looks to strike an agreement with Congress that would provide military aid for Ukraine and Israel. Republicans have been reluctant to sign off on a funding request from Democratic President Joe Biden, under which Ukraine would receive $61.4 billion. House of Representatives Speaker Mike Johnson, a Republican, said after meeting Zelensky that Biden's administration must provide more detail about how the money would be used. Thank you all for being here. I uh, just had a good meeting with President Zelensky. I reiterated to him that we stand with him and against Putin's brutal invasion. Uh, the American people stand for freedom, and they're on the right side of this fight. I have asked the White House since the day that I was handed the gavel as Speaker for clarity. We need a clear articulation of the strategy to allow Ukraine to win. And thus far, their responses have been insufficient. They have not provided us the clarity and the detail that we have requested over and over since literally 24 hours after I was handed the gavel as Speaker of the House. And so what the Biden administration seems to be asking for is billions of additional dollars with no appropriate oversight, no clear strategy to win, and, and none of the answers that I think the American people are owed. I have also made very clear from day one that our first condition on any national security supplemental spending package is about our own national security first. The border is an absolute catastrophe. And this is because of the policies of this White House and this administration. We had 12,000 illegal crossings on one day last week alone, on Wednesday. We have uh, 
almost now 280 known terrorists that have been apprehended at the border. None of this counts the gotaways. If you add the numbers up, it's almost 7 million people who have been encountered at the border just since President Biden took office and at least 2 million gotaways. This is twice the population of my state of Louisiana. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow. Thank you.